Okay, so the next lecture, lecture 11, there's, there's going to be a lot of information on, on this uh, section, a lot of new detailed information we're going to be taking a look at um, from the next three lectures are going to be the myelocytic series, the lymphocytic series, and, the, and, and going to the monocytes. Those are the three main uh, cell types, the, the white blood cells that you're going to be looking at. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is how the, the cell, uh, the maturation sequence, how the cell matures, starting with the blast stage to the mature stage. Like for example, myelocyte, starting with myeloblast, all going all the way to the neutrophil, okay? So this is the myelocytic series. Okay, so the myelocytic series includes, um, these three cells are neutrophils, believe it or not. This is a regular neutrophil. This is, uh, the middle one is a basophilic neutrophil. And the orange one is an eosinophilic neutrophil. So, but the, the basophilic neutrophil is generally called just a basophil. And the eosinophilic neutrophil is just called an eosinophil. And you remember from the five part differential. Okay, and this is the regular neutrophil, the mature neutrophil. Okay, so neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils all follow the same maturation sequence. So if you know the neutrophil, the neutrophil sequence, then, then you know the eosinophils and the basophils. They're all the same. So when cells in the myelocytic series mature from the blast stage, the blast stage is like a baby stage, the newborn stage, and it's going to mature and it takes about seven to 10 days to go to maturity, seven to 11 days to go to the mature neutrophil. Uh, it goes from large cell, the size is from large to small. So if you're looking at a peripheral smear and you see a large, a large cell, then you need to panic and you think it's in, it's in the myelocytic series. You need to panic because if you see, that's a blast. If you see blast on a smear, then that's not good. And we'll get into when we talk about leukemia. But the most immature cells are large. And as it develops into the mature stage, like the neutrophil, it'll get smaller and smaller. Also, too, the NC ratio, the nu nucleus to cytoplasm ratio, go, also goes from large to small. The nucleus compared to the amount of cytoplasm is large, okay? That's the nucleus to cytoplasm ratio. The nucleus shape, okay, it goes from regular and smooth to irregular or complex. So the nucleus in its most immature form is round and has no indentation or convolutions. It's just singular and it, it, uh, circular and it, nothing's really happening to it, okay? So that's the blast stage. As it matures, then it grows in, it develops, it grows into complexity. First, you'll start seeing indentations and then you'll start seeing granules and then you'll start seeing uh, lobe formation. And then you'll actually see the segment, the segmented neutrophils, okay? I'll show you that as uh, in a later slide. And then the chromatin pattern. Uh, another thing that you need to look at is the chromatin pattern. The chromatin pattern of the blast of the most immature cell is fine. And it, and it, as it goes through maturity, it'll get coarse in appearance. It's like going from smooth peanut butter to crunchy, extra crunchy, okay? If you wanna use that kind of analogy. But in the beginning, when it's a blast stage, it's really, really smooth, okay? And I'll show that to you when, when I show, um, show the pictures. And, and I, I mentioned complexity. Uh, the blast form is simple, the, the nucleus. I'm talking about the nucleus. It's round. Again, no indentations, no, no lobe formations. It's simple, it's round. And then as it, as it develops to maturity, then you'll start seeing um, granules, you'll see, start seeing indentations, and then you'll see the lobe formation. Okay, so that's the maturation sequence. It goes from large and simple to more complex and smaller, okay? Nucleoli. Nucleoli are 
um, I'll show you what nucleol are. They're, they're composed of protein and RNA. Okay, make sure that's a that's gonna a good matching question. If I if I say protein and RNA, you need to match it up with nucleoli. Um, you might want to start making a collection of terms and definitions because uh, from here on out you'll be getting uh, matching a matching portion on your exams. Okay, nucleoli is involved in our ribosomal RNA synthesis and the formation of ribosomes. So as the cell mature. As the cell becomes mature, the nucleoli disappear. So nucleoli are present in the most immature stages of the myelocytic series, like the blast and maybe the promyelocyte, but mainly in the blast stage, okay? Nucleoli, blast stage, and it's composed of protein and RNA. These are nucleoli here. So this is a blast. You can tell in comparison to the red blood cell, this is a nucleated red blood cell, by the way, so we don't care about that. The, if you take these as red blood cells, this is large, really large in comparison. And this is a blast, okay? These blotches here within the nuclear chromatin, those are nucleoli. These are, that's where the uh, protein and uh, synthesis is taking place. But notice the high NC ratio, high nucleus to cytoplasm ratio. This is a blast. If you see this in the NRBC there, if you see this field, you need to, you need to panic and talk and find somebody. Here's a little harder to see. You might see some nucleoli here, but if I was gonna ask you or show you a slide, identify, identify what's going on here and that's nucleoli. Actually at the end of this lecture, there's gonna be a little review. So we'll go over that. We'll go over the nucleoli again. All right, the maturation sequence starts with myeloblast. You're gonna to need to know this and you'll, you'll know it uh, eventually. Myeloblast, the next stage is promyelocyte. The next stage is myelocyte. Next stage is metamyelocyte, then the band, and then the neutrophil, okay? So myeloblast, pro, myelocyte, meta, band, and neutrophil, okay? Make sure you know those stages. So starting with the myeloblast, it's undifferentiated. Like I said, it's the baby cell. It has a high NC ratio, high nucleus to cytoplasm ratio. There are no granules in the cytoplasm. <clears throat> One of the defining features of um, cells in the myelocytic series, they're also called granulocytes, but granules have not developed yet in the cytoplasm at the myeloblast stage. Granules will come later on. <clears throat> One thing that you'll see in the cytoplasm are hour rods. That's another term. And hour rods are composed, it's a conglomeration of granules. So there's another matching term that I could use. Hour rods, you match it with conglomeration of granules. Okay. Even though there are no granules in the myeloblast, you can say, well, you know what? I thought that you said that there are gran no granules in the blast stage. Well, what are hour rods? If hour rods are there, that's a conglomeration of granules. You lied to me. I said, no, it's not. There are no granules in the cytoplasm. Our rods are in the cytoplasm, okay? Our rods are only found in the myeloblast, actually predominantly in the myeloblast stage, but can be in the pro, but predominantly in the myeloblast stage, okay? Myeloblast. The nucleus is large, just like I showed you earlier, with fine chromatin. It's smooth. Chromatin is smooth. If you compare it to like peanut butter, smooth peanut butter, the chromatin is diffuse, there's no definition, nucleoli are present and the nuclear membrane is fine. So the chromatin is diffuse and fine. It's like I said, it's the baby cell. So here, these are blasts. And these little sticks here, right here, those are the hour rods, okay? Conglomeration of granules, but they're not actually granules. It's just conglomeration of granules. Those little sticks here in the cytoplasm are our rods. Here's some of the myeloblast. Again, high NC ratio. A lot of nucleus, not too much cytoplasm. A lot of nucleus, not too much cytoplasm. Same here. A lot of nucleus, not too much cytoplasm. And here we got nucleoli, okay? This is the myeloblast stage. It's a big cell. This is a big cell. It's round. The chromatin pattern is fine. If you look at it, see, see how evenly grainy it is? Evenly grainy, that's, called, that's, a, that's the description of fine chromatin. Later on, as the chromatin pattern will become coarse and clumped, 
okay? But this is fine chromatin pattern. It's nice, evenly sandy, okay? Fine chromatin pattern. Large high NC, NC ratio, and you got nucleolide. This is the myeloblast. The next stage is promyelocyte. So the nucleus is getting smaller and more condensed. The cytoplasm is becoming more basophilic. When I say it's becoming more basophilic, it's becoming more blue, okay? Cytoplasm is becoming more blue. The chromatin pattern is still, is still fine, but the, the main um, identifying feature of a promyelocyte is that now you see granules, okay? The myeloblast, no granules in the cytoplasm. Promyelocyte, you see first sign of granules. And those first granules are called primary, primary nonspecific. So the primary granules are primary and it's nonspecific. And the specific specificity refers to the specificity of the stains. Um, when uh, in histology, they want to do special stains. It has to do with the specificity of staining of, uh, of the granules. So it's nonspecific. Uh, primary nonspecific. Those are the first granules that will show up, and these granules show up in the promyelocyte stage. Make sure you know that. What type of granule? I'm going to say promyelocyte. You're going to identify promyelocyte. I'm going to say what type of granules are seen in the promyelocytic series, and your answer will be primary nonspecific. Primary nonspecific. Here's promyelocyte. You can see in the cytoplasm here. It's granular, okay? See how you see also too, remember I said uh, nucleolite can be in promyelocytes. Here you see nucleolite here too. You don't see nucleolite here, but you see the granules. These granules, so this is the identifying feature of a promyelocyte, of a promyelocyte. Okay. Promyelocyte, primary nonspecific granules, primary nonspecific granules. More promyelocytes here, the granules. That's the prominent feature here on this cell. Granules here, this is promyelocytes, and then you can see some nucleoli here. This is the second stage in maturation. So it's okay, it's legal to see nucleoli here. But make, when you see these granules, compared to the blast, the blast has no granules, okay? But the promyelocyte, these are the first granules that will show up in maturation, promyelocyte. The next one is the myelocyte series, the third stage. The third stage, the granules become secondary specific granules. Again, specificity refers to the staining uh, in histology of, uh, of these cells. And these are secondary granules, secondary specific granules. So primary nonspecific, secondary specific. Cytoplasm is getting pinker. Another identifying feature is a Golgi apparatus. You'll be able to see the Golgi apparatus and um, that's where the granules are being packaged, these granules. The granules are packaged in the Golgi apparatus and the nucleus is starting to get more condensed as opposed to fine, uh, as being fine granular. And the blue color of the myelocyte is indicative of RNA synthesis. Blue color is indicative of RNA, means that things are happening, like protein, protein synthesis is taking place, okay? And the light area, I'll show you the light area in the myelocyte. Here's the light area right here. This is a myelocyte with this area here that's called the Golgi. This is the Golgi. You've heard of Golgi in biology. Well, here in hematology, this is the Golgi apparatus, okay? No. Uh, one thing to note about the myelocyte, the nucleus is eccentric, okay, meaning that it's not in the center. Nucleus is not in the center, uh, no indentation, no indentation, but you'll see the Golgi. Okay, compared, the promyelocyte was the second stage. This is the third stage. If you notice, you don't, the granules are gone, but on the myelocyte, you still have granules, but they are secondary specific now. Promyelocyte, remember that. Promyelocyte is primary nonspecific. The myelocyte, there are granules here in the cytoplasm. They're just not um, visible. Well, they're, they're visible if you look closely, but these granules are secondary specific. So 
you go from non-specific to specific, and then you go from primary to secondary. So primary non-specific or secondary specific. Okay, make sure you know that sequence. And also too, on the myelocyte, you'll see the Golgi. The next slide I'm gonna be identifying this cell right here, but this is myelocyte, this is myelocyte. The next one is the metamyelocyte, the metamyelocyte. Still you see secondary granules, secondary, remember, secondary specific granules. And here you're starting to see indentation, kind of like here, you see there's indentation there. That's a meta, that's a metamyelocyte. So you're starting to see indentation of the nucleus. And to determine the difference between a metamyelocyte and a band is that if the indentation is less than half the diameter, then it's a metamyelocyte. I'll, I'll illustrate that to you when we sh I show you a picture. The chromatin on a band is more condensed. Remember, maturation, the chromatin becomes more and more condensed. Remember in the blast, it was fine granular. But now as it's becoming, the nucleus is becoming more mature, it's becoming more condensed. Um, uh, in the, more condensed in the, uh, than the metamyelocyte, and that's a band, okay? So blue color is due to DNA and RNA. So, and DNA and RNA are involved with pre protein synthesis, as you already know. So as the cell matures it gets past, and gets past replication stage, you start losing RNA. So the blue will eventually disappear. The cytoplasm will become more pink rather than blue, and the chromatin becomes more dense. So here is the indentation. So here, if you say, for example, this nucleus, let's complete this, complete this circle here. So it's, it's circular. If you take this in, um, as the midpoint here, you can see my cursor going across the cell, right? If this is the midpoint, the indentation has not quite reached the, the equator of this nucleus, right? So if it hasn't reached the, the, the midway point of this nucleus, then by definition, it's a metamyelocyte. Same thing here. If you complete this as circular, this indentation, it's not, it hasn't even reached halfway across the um, across the, the, di the, the equator of this, of this cell. So these two, the indentation is not that um, deep. So that's, um, these are metamyelocytes, they're indented. If there was no indent indentation, then that would be a myelocyte, okay? Meta means that your indentation starts. You're starting to see indentation, all right? If there's no indentation, then it would be a myelocyte. And here we have the Golgi. The Golgi is still apparent. Remember in the myelocyte, the, the clearing, this light area here, that's the Golgi, okay? Metamyelocyte here has not quite gone past the midway point. So this is a meta, meta with a Golgi. Slight indentation with a Golgi, slight indentation with a Golgi. So these are metas, okay? We see that as metamyelocytes. Slight uh, in the starting of starting of indentation, starting of indentation. Also, too, look at the chromatin here. Remember the blast was fine, fine chromatin. Now it's becoming coarse. If you remember the blast, it was like smooth peanut butter, and then now it's becoming a little more crunchy and coarse. Okay, that's a sign of maturation. That's a sign of maturation. But this is not a ma totally mature cell yet because this is a metamyelocyte. This is the meta. Okay, next stage is a band. Uh, the band is without complete distinct formation of lobes. We have, now we're, ha um, we're starting to form the lobes, but we haven't gotten to the lobe part yet. If you question whether or not um, a neutrophil is either a banded neutrophil or a segmented neutrophil, the key is if you can see chromatin in the isthmus. The isthmus is between two lobes, if you can see chromatin, then it's a band. That's by definition. I've, I've, when, I was, when I was on the bench, you know, I would see arguments, well, that's a band, no, that's a seg. No, no, that's a band, no, that's a seg. If you can see chromatin on the isthmus, the isthmus is the area, it's like the, the little bridge between the two, the two lobes. If you can see chromatin, 
then it's a band. If you can't see a chromatin, meaning you only see a thin filament, then it's a sag. A thin filament, you see a sag. If you see chromatin, then it's a band. So if you ever get into a debate of whether or not you see a band versus a sag, use, use the presence of chromatin to, to make your decision. So in order for in order to be a segmented neutrophil, there must be a thin filament which you cannot see chromatin. Okay, like I just said. And the band has strong peroxidase activity, uh, periodic acid shift is sustained, and what it that means it's staining for glycogen. It's staining for glycogen. Okay, these are bands. See, you can see how the lobes are almost starting to form. You're getting indentation. If so, if you look at that, if you complete this as a complete circle, you can see that the indentation has gone past the midway point. It's gone past the midway point, therefore it's a, it's a band. And if it looks like sausage shape like this, that's also a band. Here, it's gone past the midway point, therefore it's a band. Same thing here. This is not a meta, it's a band, okay? It's, it's not a meta, it's a band. So these are bands more bands, and these are bands because there's no thin filament yet, but these are like sausage shape, and uh, the indentation has gone past the midway point, gone past the midway point, and this is a sign of complexity actually here. This is a band, but if you can see that the, the lobes are starting to form, it's not, it's not just a bended sausage. The, the, the lobes are starting to, to show definition, and also to look at the chromatin pattern, See how it's kind of coarse? If you if we call back to the myeloblast, this used to be a myeloblast, but the chromatin is not no longer fine. It's now becoming coarse, coarse granular, okay? Band, this is a band right here too. <clears throat> okay, at seven to 11 days, now we have a mature neutrophil. It takes seven to 11 days for a neutrophil to go from blast to segmented neutrophil, okay? <clears throat> neutrophils, when they develop, just because they're, um, they're the mature segment of neutrophil, they can remain in the bone marrow. And what's that? What that means, it's in the marginal pool, marginal pool. When there's a need for, for neutrophils in the peripheral blood, then it gets released into the circuit, circulating pool. So there's two types of pool, pools. The marginal pool, which can be in the bone marrow, where it's actually on standby, it's on standby for deployment. And then later on, as the need arises, then it goes into the circulating pool. <clears throat> so the majority of circulating PMNs or polymorphonuclear nuclear leukocytes, those are your SEGs, will adhere to the endothelial cell wall, okay? Waiting for its orders to be deployed during times of injury or infection. So the neutrophil, the neutrophil is involved with chemotaxis, which means that in the presence of a chemical, uh, it's going to react and move in the direction of that chemical. They'll go wherever they're needed. Neutrophils will go wherever they're needed. And neutrophils are also involved with phagocytosis. Phagocytosis, as you know, is like if you get foreign bodies like bacteria or any kind of particles that your body does not want, then it'll send the neutrophil to where it's located and it's gonna phagocytize that bacteria. Usually it's bacteria or yeast or whatever. And the neutrophils will kill or de detoxify these substances. And it does it by the enzymes in the cell. Uh, the, the, the neutrophil will degranulate, release the enzymes and will kill the bacteria or detoxify them. Okay, so that's how the neutrophil works. It's chemotaxis, it's involved with phagocytosis and degranulization, degranulation where the enzymes are released. That's how all of that happens in the neutrophil. So the primary function are phagocytosis, digestion, and secretion of substances of granular origin. Those are the enzymes. In order to shift from the marginal pool, like I said, to the circular pool during times of need, like infection or the introduction of a foreign body. And it'll re result in neutrophilia which means that you run a CBC, your neutrophils will go up because where do these neutrophils came, come from? It came from the marginal pool. So they're released from the bone marrow into the peripheral blood and your neutrophil count will be higher. 
okay? Segmented neutrophils, see the thin filaments? Now you've got clearly defined lobes, clearly defined lobes. You've got a thin filament here, thin filament here. You don't see chromatin here, so this is a seg. On this portion here, however, you see chromatin. You see between the lobes, you see chromatin. If this was not there and you only had this portion here, this would be a band. But because you can see a thin filament on this cell, this is a segmented neutrophil. If this was not here, say we cut this off and we only have this portion, there you can see between these two lobes, chromatin. So that would be a band. Here between the lobes is a thin filament no chromatin, so this is these are segmented neutrophils, okay? Okay, left shift, right shift. If I turn the maturation sequence in this direction, you got myeloblast, promyelocyte, myelocyte, meta, band, and neutrophil. Left shift refers to, if you see on the peripheral blood, this cell, the band, you go in the left direction, that's why it's called a left shift. You get a left shift because now you're seeing bands, that's a left shift. If you recall in uh, vitamin B12 deficiency, you, there was a right shift. So you go from five lobes to six or more lobes. In this direction, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have a picture here, but if it's si six lobes, then it's a right shift. Right shift is hypersegmentation. Left shift is hypo segmentation. Hypo segmentation, um, I'll take that back on the term hyposegmentation, okay? Hypersegmentation is six or more lobes, but don't, don't call this hyposegmentation. Hyposegmentation refers to something else, but left shift is our bands, okay? This is not, this is not hyposegmentation. Hypersegmentation is six lobes and left shift is bands. I'm gonna talk about hyposegmentation in a minute. Okay, left shift, increased production on the, from the bone marrow to the circulating blood of uh, bands. Okay, that's a shift to the left. So you're going to get banded neutrophils in the peripheral blood. Increase in immature neutrophils, mostly bands. The, the, the one situation I saw where it was like 60, 70% bands on the differential was a case of appendicitis, a patient's appendix ruptured. And so, so it told the bone marrow, I need more neutrophils, I need more protection. The appendix ruptured and you'll see a left shift. If the doctor sees that with lower left flank, flank pain, then it's probably appendicitis. Shift to the right, like I mentioned, seen in megaloblastic anemia, you already know that pernicious anemia, B12 folate deficiency, hypersegmentation. So it's six or more lobes. If you on your PowerPoint, it says five, it's six. I'm gonna clear, make sure I clarify that. It's six or more lobes. There we go. More than six lobes. More than six, more than six. This is hypersegmentation. This is uh, hypersegmented neutrophils. Hypersegmented neutrophils. Okay, so this probably is pernicious anemia, B12 folate deficiency. So if you see this, hypersegmented neutrophils, it's, it's reportable. Make sure you let the doctor know it's there. And um, probably B12 folate deficiency. Hyposegmentation. Okay, so the term hyposegmentation is not bands. Hyposegmentation, hyposegmented neutrophils are mature neutrophils. They are mature cells. Here, you would say, well, this is hypo, if this is hypersegmentation, this should be hyposegmentation. Here, this banded neutrophil is immature. It's not mature. This is mature and this is way mature. Okay, this is not, this is not mature. But in hyposegmentation, the cells are mature. It's just that the these cells are dumbbell shift, they're bilobed. They won't develop into more than two lobes. If you see dumbbell shape, you know, all your neutrophils are dumbbell, dumbbell shaped. The condition is called pelger hewitt anomaly. Make sure you know that. It's called pelger hewitt anomaly, where your neutrophils are bilobed. They're bilobed, okay? They look like sunglasses, okay? They look like sunglasses. They're dumbbell-shaped. 
the way uh, you can tell um, the difference between these dumbbell shaped nucleus and the mature cells is to look at the chromatin. If the chromatin is coarse, then, the, then that is a sign of maturity. If the chromatin is a little less than coarse, like if it's, it's fine, then you're dealing with bands, okay? If you have, if you're uh, another way to tell if you have pelvic hue, hue anomaly is your white count because if you have an infection your white count is probably going to be 11 12 15 okay but if you if your white count is about six seven eight thousand that's your normal a white count but you're seeing all these bilobe uh, nuclei um that's probably pelvic hue anomaly these are mature cells Pelger, make sure you know that is that Pelger, human, Pelger Hewitt anomaly uh, is hyposegmented neutrophils, but they're mature cells and they're dumbbell shaped. They look like sunglasses. So if you see sunglasses, then it's probably Pelger Hewitt, okay? It's like this. Bilobe, 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 okay? Thin filament, two lobes, thin filament, two lobes. These are mature, two lobes only. Two lobes, two lobes with sunglasses, all right? These are not bands. These are not bands, they're ray bands, okay? All right, eosinophils. Eosinophils are easy to spot because they're orange. Eosinophils are easy to spot because they're orange. Um, and, and the nucleus of a, a eosinophil, are, they're usually two lobes. Don't call it Pelger Hewitt eosinophil. Uh, eosinophils will naturally only have two lobes. And it's a little bit larger than a neutrophil, but the, the identifying characteristic is that it's orange. Okay, it's the earliest recognizable form um, in the myelocytic, is the myelocytic eosinophil. The earliest recognizable form is the, is the myelocytic eosinophil. Eosinophils, like I mentioned in the last lecture, they're extremely active in allergy and especially parasites, if there's the presence of a parasite. Acute inflammation associated with bacterial infection. But the main thing is parasites, okay? If you see a parasite uh, percent of about 10, 15%, then um, be suspicious of the presence of parasites. Orange, okay, just like that. Orange granules, easy to spot, easy to spot. <clears throat> the basophils, basophils, large dark blue granules. If I'm teaching the laboratory, and I'm, I'm um, you know, some, sometimes the students have problems with basophils. They look like berries, okay? They look like blackberries, okay? Large dark blue granules. But see, the problem with basophils is that the dark blue granules can easily be washed, can easily be washed out because they're water soluble. Also, too, fewer nuclear lobes. Okay, they're present in inflammatory reactions. And what's in these granules in the basophils are two chemicals, heparin and histamine. Heparin is an anti anticoagulant and it prevents blood from clotting too quickly. And then histamine is a, vaso, is a vasodilator. So that facilitates, like for example, if you had an infection or a cut, basophils are important because because it's a vasodilator, it'll open up the blood vessels and allow the cells to mobilize to the site of infection or injury. Okay, so histamine is important and the heparin is important. You don't want to clot too quickly, all right? Like eosinophils, basophils may play a role in both parasitic uh, infections and allergy, but usually eosinophils will play a role. It's a, that's the main cell that will be present in a parasitic infection. There it is, berries, okay? Like a blackberry, that's a basophil. Okay, inclusion bodies, just like the red blood cells, the white blood cells have inclusion bodies, especially in the myelocytic series. The first one are doly bodies. Doly bodies are light blue. They're light blue, they're really, really difficult to see, but if you see light blue um, blotches in the cytoplasm, those are doly bodies, okay? One to three microme micrometers in diameter. Doly bodies are composed of agglutinated ribosomes. So I can ask you what are doly bodies made of, okay?
Okay, it's red for a reason. Make sure you know that. The only bodies are present in inflammation and infection and increased granulocytopoiesis, okay? Especially infection, okay? I know in your notes it didn't have infection. Make sure you write down that Dolly bodies are present in infection. So right here, you see this little blotch here? It's hard to see, but that's a Dolly body. Over here, you see two Dolly bodies here next to the nucleus. Those are Dolly bodies, okay? A little bit easier to see Dolly bodies, Dolly bodies, Dolly bodies, and only those are those are Dolly bodies right there, present in infection. The next one is toxic granulation. Toxic granulations are granules that are seen in the cytoplasm, and it's common in patients with sepsis. What's another name for sepsis? What's another word for sepsis? infection of the blood infection of the blood or septicemia have you guys ever heard of septicemia septicemia is okay whenever you have anything that's emia that means it's in the blood okay like toxemia and like something toxic in the blood septicemia is not good it's bacteria in the blood bacteria in the blood and then inflammation so dolly bodies can be seen in um can be seen with toxic granulation and toxic vacuolization, which I'll talk about later. But the main thing is it's also seen in infection. So doly, doly bodies are seen in infection and toxic granulation is seen in infection. Tox okay, you see how it's grainy here? Those are the granules of toxic granulation. A little bit more so here, okay? That's toxic granulation. Okay, the third one, inclusion bodies, is toxic vacuolization. Whenever you have vacuoles in a cell, that means that neutrophil just had lunch, okay? Phagocytation, phag, um, the cell just recently phagocytized probably a bacteria. So if you see vacuoles, it just phagocytized something like bacteria. It's often, and, and so toxic vacuolization or, or vacuolated neutrophils is seen with toxic granulation, and it's also seen with doly bodies. It can be seen with doly bodies. So it's a sign of infection. So the three signs of infection are, are toxic vacuolization or, or vacuolated neutrophils, toxic granulation, and doly bodies. So if you see any of the three, and then also two, you should see bands because the, those are the inclusion bodies seen with infection. And once you have an infection, you get a left shift. Can you repeat that statement about the three that you just mentioned? The toxic vacuolization, toxic granulation, and doly bodies. Okay, those are three inclusion bodies that are that can be seen in infection. And so whenever you have an infection, you get a left shift. A left shift means you have an infection, meaning that if you see increased bands. So if you submit a CBC, I think, the criteria for path review is if there are 10% more bands, that's a sign of infection. The pathologist will wanna verify that. So if you see bands, that's a sign of infection, okay? That means um, you're asking the bone marrow to produce more neutrophils, okay? There's a site of infection, site of injury. Um, so you're telling the bone marrow you need to crank out neutrophils. So you're gonna see increased immature neutrophils or bands. So you got increased bands, and then you got your three inclusion bodies, doly bodies, toxic granulation, and toxic vacuolization. Okay. Those three inclusions plus bands equals infection. Make sure you also have a high white count between 10, between 10 and 20,000. Vacuolated neutrophils. See all the holes there? They just had lunch. Okay, there's bacteria in there. All right, that's it for the lecture. Now we're gonna do a little review. First time, remember the first time is gonna be hard as we do more and more. And this is how I want you guys to study. Whenever you guys study your notes, the first time is gonna be hard. 
then do it again. It's going to get easier. Do it again the third time. It's going to get easier. Fourth or fifth time, it's going to be a piece of cake. So this is going to be the first time we're going to do a review. It's going to be hard. So what do we have here? That's a piece of cake. What is that? Uh, segmented neutrophil. Segmented neutrophil. Okay, what is this? It's a myelocyte. Yes, good. It's myelocyte. Why would you not call? Why would you not call this a myeloblast? It's a myelocyte because you can almost because kind of it has the like Golgi. Golgi. Yeah. And then also to look at the chromatin, it's not it's not fine. It's a, it's starting to force. So this is a myelocyte. Myelocyte's the third stage. Okay. What is this? Eosinophil. That's an eosinophil. And what is this? Myeloblast. Correct. It's a myeloblast. See the high NC ratio? Uh, there's no nucleoli, but look at the chromatin. See how fine this is? See how fine this is compared to um, the myelocyte? See how that's coarse? Okay, that's what I mean by coarse. And then if you look at the blast, see how fine it is? It's, it's more grainier and more organized, and more diffuse. Okay, myeloblast. What do we have here? Promyelocyte. The promyelocyte. What kind of granules are those? Primary nonspecific. Correct. Primary nonspecific. Those are the first granules that show up. Promyelocyte. What do we have here? Hypersegmented right. neutrophil. That's an easy one. Hypersegmented neutrophil. So B12 folate, pernicious anemia, parasitic infection. So what about here? The bottom one. Myelocyte. Myelocyte, right. No indentation, but you see the Golgi. No indentation, but you see the Golgi. This one is a met, probably a meta. That's why I said the lower one. Okay. What are those things in there? The circles. Nucleoli. Okay. okay. What are these? Bands. Those are bands, correct. <clears throat> They've gone past the midpoint. Okay. This. So this, what kind of shift is this? Left shift. Left. left, left shift. What is this? Toxic vacuolization. Correct, toxic vacuolization. And this one? Hyposegmented neutral. Right. Or what else? What's the other term for it? Sunglasses. Sunglasses. No. Ray no. bands. These Ray are, bands. Oh, the Ray remember, bands. These yeah. are Ray bands, <laughs> but they're not bands, okay? Uh, Pilger Hewitt. This is Pilger Hewitt anomaly. What is this? Made a myelocyte? Correct. That's a metamyelocyte. What is this? A basophil. basophil. That's a basophil. Remember, berries. Okay, berries. That looks like a blackberry. Look at the cytoplasm here. What is that? Um, toxic. Toxic. Granulation. Granulation. Okay. So remember, the three, the three inclusions for infection are Toxic granulation, doly bodies, and vacillated neutrophils. There's no arrow, but what's that little blue thing up there at the top there? You see it? Doly bodies. That's a doly body. Okay. The sign of infection. What are those little sticks there called? Arrow rods. 
those are our rods. Okay, it's probably a blast. See, see some nucleolite going on in there. Okay, that's it for the review. Let's do it one more time. Let's go faster, okay? See, the first, remember, whenever you do review like this, the first time it's gonna be slow, it's gonna be harder to pull out the answers. But now, let's do it a second time around and it should take half, like the, half the time. All right, let's get some quick answers here. Anybody? Pigmented neutral. Okay. Myelocyte. Okay. Cinephil. Okay. Myeloblast. Okay. Promyelocyte. Promyelocyte because of the granules. <laughs> Hypersegmented neutrophils. Hypersegmented neutrophils. Myelocyte? Correct, myelocyte. Nucleoline. Nucleoline, okay. Band. 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 Left band. shift. Left shift band. Toxic. Toxic. Vaccualization. Okay, toxic vaccualization. Ray bands. Ray bands. Okay. <laughs> Bogart Hewitt or hypo segmented. Metamyelocyte. Meta That's a meta. Metamyelocyte. Basophil. 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 Toxic granulation. Granulation. The little blue dolly bodies. Dolly, dolly, dolly. dolly bodies. Okay. Uh, our rods. Our rods. Those are our rods. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Any questions on the myelocytic series? I thought it was going to be longer, but we went we went through it pretty good. So a lot of new terms, a lot of new cells. So I wanted to ask you guys uh, on the RBCs, RBC identification. I didn't on any of my exams. I didn't show you any pictures, and I was gonna hopefully, you know, last semester I taught the laboratory, but I did. I'm not able to teach the lab this time. But are do you guys get quizzed on the different types of RBCs like? Crenated versus bite cell versus uh, target cell, etc. Were you guys ever quizzed on that? Um, you ever, were you ever shown pictures? No. In other words, no. no, no. Okay. How do you guys feel about that? If I gave you a quiz on the different types of red blood cells, because again, you know, if I was teaching the lab, I would have done that by now. Would that be a piece of cake for you guys? Is it like a, like an extra credit quiz? <laughs> Is there some sort of study guide to a reference page for that? Somebody need points or something? <laughs> I mean, at this point, you really know target cell versus stomatocyte versus uh, helmet cell. You should know that. I, I think you know that. But, yeah. but see, the thing is, I want to make sure, I want to personally make sure that you know that. So if I gave, I mean, it would almost be extra credit. But if I gave you a quiz like that, the thing is, I think what maybe one of the problems is because if, because Xavier, when he makes copies of your exams, he, it's in black and white, but I would like to give you a quiz where you actually see color, the color cells. So what will happen is I'm gonna show you a cell. I, I thought about it, I'm gonna show you a cell, but it's gonna be like this. It's gonna be in this situation. I'm gonna flash, I'm gonna flash a cell on the screen and then you will type in your answer. And then once we're done, then you email me your answer sheet. So I know right away. Do you want an exam like that? Well, I don't, 
I mean, you know, at this point, it really should be pretty easy. Because the same thing, I mean, I was hoping that he would do an exam on the, on the different cell types. You're going to be seeing, I think, pretty soon the abnormal cell types where you actually look at the smears. But I think it may be good before you go, you jump into your um, uh, RBC identification razor that you get tested on it. So I can probably do an in-class in class exam. I don't know, it's six o'clock. I'm not going to do it today. Don't worry. I'm not going to do it today. But probably if I have time next, next time, if I have at least half an hour, it's not even going to take that long. I'm going to, I'm going to flash um, an image. You tell me what it is. I'm going to flash another image. It's like this. You know, I'm going to give you this. I'm not going to give you the slide with the answer. It's going to be like, tell me what it is. What is this? What is this? What is this? <coughs> what is this? Okay. And then so I can actually even do um, red blood cells with these pictures. Okay. In fact, why don't I do that? Are you saying you want to do that like during the lecture time, not the lab no, time? After, after the lecture. I want to give the lecture. I don't want to do it during lectures. Like after the lecture. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, during okay. the lecture, during the lecture session. So what you'll do is you're gonna have you're gonna um, open up like a Word document or something, and then you're gonna save the file as RBC ident um, cell identification. I'm going to do RBC identification, and I think for next time around, um, as part of your quiz, these cells will be on there. And obviously, it's not going to have the answers. You just tell me what they are, all right? I mean, after doing this twice, it seems like it was pretty apparent that you guys picked up on it pretty good, all right? So and are you... Are you saying that you want to do no, this you know, picture quiz you know, replacement I, of the You know what, I'll take that one because next week you're going to have your exam. But not during lecture. You're going to have your exam on Thursday. We can do it on uh, after lecture next time. Is that all right? So between now and next Wednesday, I'm going to remind you, memorize your pictures, your abnormal RBCs, and, and all the pictures on the my list on lecture 11. All right. Are we still having a quiz then on that on Thursday? Thursday? You'll still have it on Thursday, but the thing is, there's not going to be any pictures. Uh, so we're having this picture one on Wednesday, then the quiz and the exam on next on Thursday? Thursday. On Thursday. Like, is that too much? I'm going to go over the review in a minute. Maybe we can do like, instead of the quiz, do the quiz on Wednesday. See, the thing is, I can't administer that? the quiz because usually the quiz is given on Thursdays. Because it's, it's all typed out. It's, and Xavier prints it out and then you guys take it on, you guys take it on Thursday. You guys want the quiz on Thursday, on Wednesday, I mean? It's possible. Maybe like the following Wednesday, not next Wednesday, because we have like the exam and the quiz already. So like the one next, the one after that, because it would only be the quiz and this picture one. Yep. So what do you want to do next Wednesday? Do you, want your, do you want your lecture quiz? Okay, you're going to be Not getting next a quiz Wednesday. on, okay, so today I give, gave a lecture on lecture 10 and 11, okay? So next Thursday, you're supposed to get a quiz, quizzes on lecture 10 and 11. What you're saying is, but my concern is you haven't been tested on any images, any pictures. When, did when you are we looking at the slides? What's that? When are we going to be looking at the slides, the actual? Pretty soon, pretty soon. Okay. Let me see, hold on for a second.
hopefully if Xavier's on schedule. laboratory activity. So today is the end of September. Okay, so tomorrow, tomorrow you're going to be doing RBC indices. So that's going to be like an in class. You're going to be starting doing your RBC identification on, on October 7th. On October 7th. Okay. So no, not next to... week, not next week, but the week after. So that's why I was saying it, it'll be kind of good that I give you a quiz on RBC on RBC identification before October 7th. Could you give us some sort of a um, review guide with some of those cells that you might identify or not even the pictures that you're going to use, but maybe just some to give us a, an idea oh, or I can give you the I can give you the cells uh, for review. So let me see. Let me see. So this October 7 is actually a Thursday. October 6, I can give you a quiz. On the, um, that's better. On the Wednesday? Yeah. You want to do that? That's October better, 6? yeah. OK. So that's going to be a lecture quiz. We'll call that a lecture quiz. And I'll send you a review, all right? I'll send you a review before um, next week. So tomorrow, it looks like tomorrow it looks like you guys will be doing, or tomorrow you'll be doing um, RBC indices. It's it's a dry lab where you guys are going to be doing calculations in lab. Okay, so it should be an easy lab for you guys. You, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of. Uh, RBC indices, calculate MCH, MCV, and MCHC, that kind of thing. It looks like it's going to be a dry lab if he's on schedule. All right. And then October 6th, or between now and uh, October 6th, uh, I'll give you review slides. All right. Okay. So we'll do that. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so let's go ahead. Yeah. All right, can you see me? Yes. 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 You're not supposed to see me. All right. Because I'm going to, okay. Can you see my screen? No. No. Are you sure? Because I'm going to be doing review. No, I see black. Okay. All right. So for tomorrow, you're going to be getting a quiz on megaloblastic anemia and hemoglobinopathies. Okay. So this is the review. So I had already mentioned about megaloblastic anemia, correct? Yes. Yeah. So remember, megaloblastic anemia is a type of anemia. Okay, and there are conditions that there are conditions that um, result in megaloblastic anemia. And, and what what's one main what is the main condition that causes megaloblastic anemia? Oh, then I talked about ME ratio. What, what is the normal ME ratio? ME ratio is, remember, is the myeloid erythroid ratio. What's the normal? One to one? Five to one? No. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm nodding no, but you can't, <laughs> you can't see me. What's the normal, normal range for um, myeloid erythroid ratio? 
Three to one to you guys, most of you got this correct on the homework, but what's the problem, the, the um, DNA synthesis problem in megaloblastic anemia? Is it the yeah, nuclear that's... center? Yeah, the asynchrony? Correct. It's nuclear cytoplasm asynchrony. Some of you had uh, taken information from the text and um, just as a reminder, all my quizzes and all my exams don't come from the text. They come directly from the PowerPoint. So if you want to study for my exams, study, study the PowerPoint presentations. Anything I say, anything I say is fair game for a test. And that's why it's also really important that um, you listen to the lecture that I'm, um, the, the YouTube lecture that I'm um, recording right now, okay? And you know the findings of megaloblastic anemia, that's from the homework. Um, you know you know where you get your vitamin B12 from and you know where, where do you get your vitamin B12 from? What type of food? Meats. What about for folic acid? Vegetables, leafy right. greens. Leafy greens. Okay. And we talked about what happens. Um, what are the what's the name of the cells in the stomach where intrinsic fat comes from? Parietal cells. Parietal cells. Parietal cells. And what about um, Transcobalamin 2. Trans yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Now, before vitamin B12 gets into the circulation, what is it? What does vitamin B12 bind to before it goes into the circulation? Intrinsic factor. factor. Yeah, no, uh, TC2. Yeah, TC2. Mm. So, in order to get into the ileum, it binds to intrinsic factor. Then it migrates and it's getting ready to go to the uh, circulation, and it's transcobalamin too. So when it's when we're talking transcobalamin, there's three sites. Okay, you got the stomach, you got the ileum, oh. and you got the circulation. So in the stomach, that's where the intrinsic factor comes from. But in the ileum, that's where the B12, the B12 intrinsic factor gets replaced. And before it's ready to go into the circulation, it has, it has to bind to transcobalamin 2, and then it goes into the circulation. So it's almost, it's almost simultaneous. It's in the circulation, then it's transcobalamin 2, okay? What's the most common cause of vitamin B12 deficiency? Malnutrition. Um, this was in the notes. The most common cause of vitamin B12 nutrition. Malnutrition is, yeah, um, but that's not one of the choices. It's an anemia. Mm. Pernicious anemia. Yeah, it's pernicious anemia. And you know the parasite, right? And regarding turnover rate, which is faster? B12 or folic acid? The turnover rate. You know, you eat it, then you, you eat it, you need it, you eat it, you need it. B12? Um, the turnover rate is faster in folic acid because B12, you store it so that your turnover rate is lower. So you have a st higher storage of vitamin B12. So you don't, you tur the turn turnover rate is much slower. So you store a lot of vitamin B12. And that's why, you know, I say that it's harder to be vitamin B12 deficient because you have a lot in storage. Whereas for folate, for folate or folic acid, 
the storage rate is smaller, so you turn it over faster. Okay. Okay, and that's that's the megaloblastic anemia review. The next one is hemoglobinopathies. So defects in hemoglobin, know about the defects in hemoglobin, what are significant, which ones are significant, which ones are not. Um, know the difference between homozygous and heterozygous, which one's more severe? Homozygous. Homozygous, and that's because you get the full dose. You get the full dose of the deficiency. Make sure you know your hemoglobin substitutions for S, was it S, C, and E? Okay, make sure you know the amino acid deficiencies. And you already know where, where uh, hemoglobin E, the geographic um, location where these patients are from, where are they from? Or Cambodia, Philippines, uh -huh. okay. East Asia. Southeast Asia. And know the definition of alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia, where, where increase in certain chains or decrease in certain chains of alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. Um, know, your, know what gamma 4 is and that, know what beta 4 is, what diseases they cause. No, make sure you know what hemoglobin BARTS is. Uh, it's a complete deletion of which gene. Hemoglobin BARTS. Alpha? Correct. And which one is more severe, the, the hemoglobin H or hemoglobin BARTS? Which one, which, which is the one where the patients will, the infants will die almost at stillborn? Is it hemoglobin A? Which one is it, BART or H? Oh. Mm. BART? Yeah, BART. BART is bad. And let me see. If you don't have any hemoglobin A or hemoglobin A2, what do you have? What's left? F. What type of hemoglobin do you have? F. Say that one more time. Hemoglobin F. Right. So if you're an adult with hemoglobin F, what is the disease called? Hereditary, hereditary. No. hereditary persistence. Right, hereditary persistence of hemoglobin at F. So it's HPHF. Oh, There's a question in here that I told you I wasn't going to ask, so I'm, I'm not going to grade it. It's the one in cellulose acetate elastophoresis pH 8.6. You cannot separate hemoglobin S from D. I'm not going to, I'm going to strike that one or not, not grade that one. Make sure you know the sodium metabisulfite procedure, the dithionite tube test uh, procedure, the alkali denaturation test, what's involved, and make sure you know the reagent. Um, 
the acetylfenhydrazine test. Okay, what is what are you creating? Anybody know what you're creating in the acetylfenhydrazine test, phenylhydrazine test? Mm -mm. That's the one where you're making the Heinz bodies. And then you, you know the know the principle of electrophoresis. And know when uh, sed rates are increased. Know what um, clinical condition, what, what is it, uh, a simple test for the sed rate? ESR? Yeah, the ESR. What is, what is a, t a test measure? What does it measure? What the is sedimentation it? rate? What is it? The sedimentation rate, how long it takes for inflammation? Oh, no, no, that's the principle. What, it, what is it telling the doctor? For inflammation? What is it? Is it the inflammation? Yeah, it's inflammation. And negatively charged RBCs is what is called what? Zeta potential? Yeah, that's a zeta potential. Okay, know when the I, I mentioned to memorize this, know when the uh, ESR is increased and when is it decreased, okay? Mainly know when it's increased. No one has said rate is increased, right? So that is that quiz. Okay, so for your midterm, basophilic stippling, you know when that is, you see basophilic stippling, what are you suspecting? What is the, what's wrong with the patient maybe? Remember basophilic stippling? Leukemia? No. The children eat paint chips. Lead poisoning? Lead poisoning. Remember, basophils is lead poisoning. Make sure you know what the, what the um, inclusions are made of. Like um, Heinz bodies and Cabot rings and um, Pappenheimer bodies, make sure you know what they're made of, okay? Make sure you know what the inclusions are made of. Um, make sure you know, um, let's see. I think you know that one. You know that one. You know that one. Okay, it's not that one. Okay, iron deficiency anemia. What are the two things that are increased? Anemia, it means everything's in decreased, but iron deficiency anemia, there are two things that are increased. Yeah, RDW? Yeah, and. And reticulocyte. See, I know you need that one. Be familiar with the types of conditions where you have a normal chromic, normal acidic anemia. Make sure like, for example, tumors or whatever. There's, there's, certain, there's certain things that are um, conditions where you ha would have a normal chromic, normal acidic anemia. Make sure you know where erythropoietin is made. Where is it made? Mm -hmm. Erythropoietin, what organ? The liver. Say again. Is it the liver? No. Kidney? Is it the spleen? It's the kidney. Okay, anti-D antibodies, is that allo or auto? Allo. Okay, uh, let me see. Anti-I, is that allo or auto? Let me give you a hint. I only talked about one allo. Auto. Auto. <laughs> okay. Um, what's another name for the, what is it, autohomolysin antibody? 
it's the dawn of something. Yeah, and is that auto or allo? That is auto. Right. Remember, I only talked about one allo. All right, remember the cold agglutinin syndrome. What is the antibody in that one? Anti-I. Anti-I. And what's the condition? There's a clinical condition. I didn't really focus on it. Uh, uh, do you, rem you remember what that was? It begins with an R. Raynaud's phenomenon. Yeah. Raynaud's phenomenon. And uh, on the uh, hemolytic disease of the newborn, what's the disease of the baby? Begins with an E. Erythroblastosis fatalis. Right. Okay. And you know the test for hereditary spherocytosis? What's the test for hereditary spherocytosis? Monic fragility test. Uh huh. What about PNH? What is the screen for PNH? Uh, gross hemolysis. Right. And the confirmation? Hamstead. 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 And that's uh, the acid, right? Okay. Can pregnancy cause aplastic anemia? Are you guys still there? Yes. What's the question? Can pregnancy cause aplastic anemia? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was on. It was on the list. It was on the list. All right. Gosh, and th this one was so, kind of disappointed me on on one of the quizzes. Remember, make make sure you know the the. The, the blotches, less than three, three, and uh, up to one centimeter, and things like that. What's the difference between petechia, purpura, and ecchymosis? Make sure you know the, the, those, um, the sizes, okay? Which one's petechia, which one's purpura, and which one's ecchymosis? And know how to treat Fanconi's anemia. Remember, the cutoff is 50 years old. So younger than 50 years old, what do you get? And great older than 50 years old, how do you treat it? So who gets the stem cell? Younger than 50. Um, right. And then if you're older, you get the drug, right? Mm -hmm. Remember what the drug was? No. ATG. ATG. And in, in megaloblastic anemia, you have an abnormal red cell precursor. What are those called? Large abnormal red cell precursor. It's in the notes. Megaloblast. Megaloblast.
Okay, so you have B12, right? And then you have um, intrinsic factor, right? So where does that, where does that get, where does that uh, take place? Stomach. In the stomach. No, the intrinsic factor is in the stomach. B12 doesn't make it to the stomach. So in order to be absorbed into the ileum, So, okay. So, well, you're right. Okay, because you're gonna eat the fish, it goes to the stomach, and then it's gonna mix with the intrinsic factor. But in order to be absorbed into the ileum, it needs to bind to. In the uh, the two need to bind together. That's why if you have stomach cancer and you don't have intrinsic factor, then you're gonna have B12 deficiency. Okay, so that. Um, so the binding will take place in the stomach, you're correct. But in order to be absorbed into the ileum, um, the complex has to take place. You understand? So you have the complex. Once you have the complex, that's your ticket to get into the ileum. You understand that? Mm -hmm. You guys see that? Yes. Okay. And then in order to get into the circulation, what has to take place? It has to bind to what? TC2. Correct. You know, as a substitution, you know that. Hemoglobin BART. Gamma 4 is what? And beta 4 is what? Beta four is that um, hemoglobin parts. Beta four, yeah. I think I apologize. That? I said this one. The B's don't match, so beta is not Bart. Oh, uh, so that's H then. Yeah, Bart is Bart is gamma. H is beta four, and you're gonna see a four L. Ignore the L. Hemoglobin lipor, you know what that is, right? What a fusion of which two hemoglobins? The delta and the beta. Yeah. And there is a calculation. There are calculations in here. Calculate MCHC. Calculate MCHC. Calculate MCH. You guys know? Do you guys know about that? Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Have you done that in lab? No, we did it for. Where? Where? I need to know. I don't. I don't recall. Do you guys? Because I don't think I gave this to you as an exercise. No, uh, I don't no. remember it. You know how Can to go over it. Can I go I don't over think it? We, we didn't do it. Yeah. You can do it. Do you want me to send you examples? Yes. Yes. And I just get the formula. No. <laughs> you want the formula? <laughs> yes. To calculate it. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll send you examples. Is it going to be as appropriate or is it going to be direct calculation? As appropriate? No. Yeah. Are you going to put no, that in there? It's not going to be like that. And you already know the as appropriate trap already. Uh -huh. And then calculate lymphos absolute lymphocyte, calculate absolute lymphocyte. That's easy review. Uh, normal values. Make sure you guys know your normal values. One thing about normal values is you know your normal values. I, I, um, I know you do because most of you wrote the ranges. I think what'll be helpful is if you write the ranges next to, next to the uh, component, then you get it, you'll do fine. Some people didn't write the ranges and you got them wrong. 
if you you know the ranges to all of these WBC, RBC, hemoglobin, etc. Write the ranges next to it, and then and then tell me if it's high or low. Um, some people memorize it, but other people who didn't who, who know it but didn't write it down got some of the questions incorrect. Okay, so there's going to be normal values, especially when you do case studies. I'm going to have have normal values there too. So on the CBCs. Write down the normal values. I'm not going to give you points for doing it, but it's I'm I'm scoring you on whether you have uh, correctly indicated high or low. Okay. Normal values, absolute value, absolute count, and indices. I'll send you indices and the formula. You know the formula, really? Are you serious? You want me to send you the formula? Uh, know the principle of uh, electrophoresis. Um, what, what kind of things, uh, separation is based on what? What factors separate, um, electrophoresis? The movement of charged particles. Okay. Charge. What else? Separation is based on what? What factors? The electric field. Um, the which is the charge. What else? Mm -hmm. pH. Right. What was the question again? Electrophoresis. Electrophoresis separation is based on what factors? Okay, so you have a drop of protein and you run electric current through it. Separation of the proteins are based on certain physical characteristics. One of them was charge. What was another one? pH. Are you guys still there? <laughs> uh, the buffer. What is it? Buffer. Buffer. No, buffer. Buffer maintain maintains the pH. So pH of the mole. I'm talking about the molecule, the the stuff that you're trying to separate out. What is it about that drop of protein or serum? That you're trying to separate out. So the proteins are will separate out based on what pH. It's it'll separate out based on charge. It's going to separate based on the size of the particles and the type of hemoglobin. Look at slide nine, slide uh, lecture nine. This is in lecture nine, slide twenty five. Make a note of that. Okay, lecture nine, slide twenty five. I think that's, I think you know the rest of it. I think we, we mentioned the rest of it. So that's it for your exam. So. And tomorrow it's only the quizzes for um, eight and nine? Uh, eight and nine. Uh, eight and nine, because I did 10 and 11 today. And I just did review for eight and nine. Hemoglobinopathies and megaloblastic anemia. All right, so I'll send you, okay, so I have some things to do. I'm gonna send you a review for pictures because we're gonna do we're gonna do a picture quiz next week, right? And then I'll send you exam, uh, uh, I mean, example of calculation. Yes, please. All right, anything else? The next time I see you will be next Wednesday. Send me, uh, send me emails if you ever have questions on anything. If you want me to clarify things, send me a question. Um, um, shoot me an email. All right. Uh, can you uh, 
send the or upload this recording so we can kind of review it before it goes tomorrow. Yeah, aren't you getting the recordings? Yeah, I mean like like record it or upload it today so we can view it today. Oh, yeah. I'll probably do last time I did it the same day. Um so after lecture, I'll send it to you guys. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. Make sure you listen to those. Make sure you listen to those. And make sure you read your notes uh, a, a few times. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, if you don't have any more questions, I'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good night. All right. Bye. Good night. <laughs>